Right, hi Year 11, this is Mr. Lim here again, and this is our first video on chemical bonding about electron configuration and stability. Nice and short one. All right, so this is what we're going to be learning, the relationship between stability of an atom and its electron configuration. Okay, so what does it say? It says atoms are the most stable, most stable, when they have a full P orbital. Okay, so you might have heard people talk about full shells and stuff. It's not really a full shell. We're really only talking about the full P orbitals in their valent shell. All right. Uh, valence shell being the outermost energy level. All right. When they achieve a full p orbital, they become unreactive or stable. Okay. So depending on the properties of an atom, I uh, ideally also their uh, electron negativity and first ionization energy, they will achieve a full p orbital in different ways. Okay. So they're still trying to get a full p orbital, but there are different ways to do it. So how they achieve their full. Uh, uh, full p orbitals is a study of chemical bonding, which is what we'll be doing over the next couple of topics. Um, so, noble gases, you've heard of group 18 noble gases already. They already have full p orbitals, which is why they are stable already, and they exist as individual atoms because they don't have to uh, bond with anyone else to get their full p orbitals. They already have their full p orbitals. All right? But other elements which don't have full p orbitals, they have to do something to get full p orbitals. So, um, it is important to refer to these 4p orbitals as stable electron configurations rather than full shells, okay? So a lot of people will use the words full shells, which is terrible, okay? You're really talking about stable electron configurations. That's the words that you want to use. Okay, so stable electron configurations rather than full shells. And that's it. Nice and short. Adios.